How much would you be willing to pay for a gaming headset? And what features would you expect it to have? Well, with the SteelSeries Arcus Nova Pro Wireless, the $350 price point is jarring, but once you see the feature set, it all actually sounds pretty intriguing. With ANC, Bluetooth, and hot swappable batteries that basically mean infinite battery life, there is a lot to talk about here with the Nova Pro Wireless, and I love almost all of it except for one thing. Let's check it out. Thanks for watching 9to5toys. Be sure to like, subscribe, and enable notifications with the bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Hey everyone, I'm Jordan with 9to5toys and we are checking out the Arctis Nova Pro Wireless from SteelSeries today. And if the price didn't give it away, this is the new flagship from SteelSeries. And first off, there are two different versions available, one for both PC and PlayStation, and then one that's designed for Xbox but also works on PC and PlayStation as well for the same price. So you should probably opt for the Xbox just because it has the most compatibility and you aren't really losing anything there. And diving into design, first off, the SteelSeries Arctis this Nova Pro Wireless is very familiar. I've spent a lot of time with the 7X and the 9X on the Xbox, but the Nova Pro Wireless changes things up a little bit from those headsets. Like other SteelSeries headsets, the Arctis Nova Pro Wireless features a ski goggle headband design, but it has been updated a bit. Rather than the Velcro straps that tighten and loosen the band, there are three little attachment points on either side to tighten or loosen that strap. The ear cups will extend and rotate 90 degrees to lay flat on your shoulders when not in use. And SteelSeries also offers other replacement booster packs with different colors for the headband and the removable ear cup covers. And then moving on to the ear cup design, rather than the flat side of the ear cups that we're used to from other SteelSeries headsets, these stick out a little bit. Both plates are removable. On one side, there is a USB-C port, and on the other side, a removable battery. The hot swap battery can be exchanged with another battery that is charging in the base station. More on that in a bit. One other notable design update is that on the microphone, which is extendable like other SteelSeries headsets, it uh, goes in and kind of sits flush in here with the rest of the body, so it's a little bit more uh, hard to see. On some of the other ones, there's a little nub that would stick out, but on this, it kind of just sticks in there a little bit, and it's a lot harder to see, a little more stealthy so that really cleans up the design when you're not using the microphone you don't really have to worry about removing it altogether finding a place for that or putting your cover on it or anything like that so this really does help to clean up the design of the headset and make it not look so gamery otherwise most of the controls are located on the left ear cup from top to bottom there is a power button microphone mute button and volume control the volume control is stepped and easy to adjust, but because it's on a higher level than the bottom of the ear cup, there really isn't much concern for accidentally moving the dial when you are adjusting or removing or putting the headset on. And then lastly, the left ear cup also has a 3.5 millimeter port for more flexibility. Over on the right ear cup is a Bluetooth button and that's it as far as functionality. So this updated design really doesn't stand out as a gaming headset, you know, quite a bit different than the Sony InZone H9 that we looked at recently. You know, this is one that you could easily take Take with you you know on public transport or for traveling or just kind of out on the go and wouldn't really stick out like other gaming headsets all right and that's the headset uh, the other big thing that comes in the box here is the wireless base station and there are a lot of things going on here i plug it into my mac just so you can kind of see the screen on here and how that works it can adjust audio. You can kind of see as I do that, it's going up and down. It also gives you a little readout of some different status. On the left, we have the status of the current battery that's installed. And then we also have uh, which USB port it's using because in the back, there are two different USB ports. So you can kind of switch back and forth between two different inputs if you want. So if you have it uh, hooked up to a console and then also to your computer, it's really easy to switch between those without actually unplugging and plugging anything in. And it also gives you the status of the internal battery and when that's charged and that is housed over here on the other side. It's really easy to pop out. If you do need to replace that battery, uh, I had to do this on a recent stream and it was very easy to do. You can just put that back in and then charge it back up uh, when you swap over to the other one. And this dial on here kind of also acts as a multi-purpose little button. So if you hold it in, you can get access to the menu and you can make a bunch of changes here. And then there's this little button right here that acts as a back button. So that's what will go back out and get you out of those different menu options. But one other thing to note here is that all that can be controlled from the headset as well well with the volume dial. So I'm going to hold in the volume button here. You can see that the input comes up and then the wireless, all the different options are coming on there. So if you are, you know, gaming and you want to change some of the EQs, you can do that through here. It's pretty, it's pretty incredible. So a lot of control. 
Um, you know, if you want to do it from the headset or if you want to do it from the base station or from an app, you can pretty much do any of those. So a lot of functionality built into this. And then on the back, in addition to those two USB-C ports, there are also a line in and a line out. And once we get into the Sonar software, we'll see kind of how that plays in because there are some different options for outputs on here. If you kind of want to do a streaming mode and have a little bit more control over a couple of different volume settings. So touching on battery life real quickly, uh, that really is not much of a concern with this headset because it does have that hot swap battery. So when you remove this cover, it sits in there. I think as long as you swap it within eight seconds, the headset will stay on. Uh, but if it's longer than that, then you can just power the headset on itself. I think that I usually wasn't able to do it that quickly, but um, if you can do it that quickly, then the headset will stay powered on. But it's pretty awesome to be able to just use this kind of infinitely. You never have to worry about plugging it in or taking it off to let it recharge. Uh, if you are on the go and using this for an extended amount of time, each battery can last for between 18 to 22 hours, depending on whether you're using 2.4 gigahertz or Bluetooth or both of those combined together. So uh, all together with both batteries, you get some pretty long runtime from like 36 to 44 hours. Um, so that should be plenty enough uh, when you are on the go. And all these features don't really mean anything if the headset itself doesn't sound good, but thankfully uh, they've really killed it with the sound quality on the Nova Pro Wireless. Using 40 millimeter drivers, the wireless frequency response is rated at 10 to 22,000 hertz, while wired goes all the way up to 40,000 hertz. Detail, clarity, positioning, it's all there with the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro Wireless. In its default EQ mode, the headset sounds great with full punchy bass that keeps things clear in the mids and highs at the same time. It's a real treat for playing games like Battlefield 2042 where there's always a lot going on. And that clarity in the mids and highs makes picking out gunfire and positions relatively easy. It may be a little bit on the darker side uh, for the default EQ uh, to my ears, but that is easy to change with different EQ settings. So moving on to the software side of things, there's a ton of functionality in here and a lot of customization you can do. Going into the SteelSeries GG app, there are deep EQ controls with a few basic presets like bass boost, focus, and smiley, but it's also easy to build out your own custom EQ profile. And moving on down are controls for mic volume, a headset gain toggle, mic side tone controls, and an output section. So this streaming option will allow for further control of main, auxiliary, and mic volumes for sending audio through the lineout on the back of the wireless base station. And where things really start to get interesting is when you enable Sonar through the settings in the SteelSeries GG app. Sonar divides audio into a few different sections with an overall mixer, game, chat, and microphone controls. In the game tab, Sonar will override the EQ settings from the normal SteelSeries GG engine, but there are many more options for configurations in Sonar. Hitting the drop down next to the configuration reveals a wide assortment of pre-built EQ profiles for games, music, and other media. And this is exactly what I felt was missing from the Sony InZone H9. Like you had EQ customization and a few different, you know, very basic kind of presets, but there wasn't anything that was specific to like FPS games or racing games. And with Sonar and those different profiles, it goes even further than that. There are already specific profiles for like Call of Duty, for Escape from Tarkov, for Forza Horizon 5, and then there are even more games. There are different music options, uh, lots of different voice options. So really uh, detailed functionality in there for really dialing in the sound. And those also just work as a base if you wanna you know, take the Call of Duty one, but you just wanna bump up the lows a little bit so it's not as kind of muted in the low end. It's really easy to do that. And beyond that, it also appears as if Sonar works for other headsets as well. I plugged in the Sony InZone H9 and ran it through Sonar from the SteelSeries app because within the game tab, you can set the output to be a different thing. It even worked for my uh, receiver and speakers that I have set up here at my desk. So it doesn't have to be limited to just the Arctis, which is pretty wild. And there are also spatial sound options inside of Sonar, but for gaming, uh, I still didn't really care for this. You know, the way it kind of changed the sound, uh, it just wasn't natural for me to be able to pick out, you know, different positions of my enemies. Um, I preferred the spatial audio turned off. And with music, it definitely changes the sound too much for me, and I definitely do not recommend it for music. All right, and another huge part of the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro Wireless is ANC, or Active Noise Cancellation. Using a four-mic hybrid design, ANC has been a lifesaver for me during these hot summer months. 
With a portable AC unit and a fan usually running in my office, the ANC from the Nova Pro Wireless worked really well to reduce background noise when gaming. It really helps to keep my focus on the game without having to crank up the volume to hear all the small details. And while I don't really think it's quite as good as the Sony Inzone H9's ANC, this is still really good and I was really impressed with how well it was able to knock out a lot of those background noises. And by default, this is what the microphone sounds like on the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro Wireless. But once again, within Sonar, there is a ton of functionality built in there to kind of change up your voice. And once again, this also works for other input devices as well. So you can take the microphone from your Sony and change it up or the microphone from the Duocast and change it up. So let's hop over there and take a quick look. All right, so here within Sonar, you can see that we have the Arctis Nova Pro Wireless set as the microphone input. And if we go to that tab, once again, there is a lot of functionality built in here. So a lot of different changes that we can make. Uh, most notably up top here is configuration. Again, we have all the different modes in here. You can see that I made one for the Sony Endzone H9, which actually made some really nice changes to it. But I'll click on balance so you get an idea for what that sounds like. You can also do broadcast low pitch, which changes it up quite a bit. And we can also hop down to something like walkie talkie. So a lot of different functionality built in here. And then uh, I'll put that back on balanced. And then down below, you can see there is ClearCast AI noise cancellation, making your own voice crystal clear by removing any non-vocal sounds with an AI-powered noise cancellation. So it's an early access, but is a great little feature. So you can enable that, turn it up or down. And then this kind of overrides some of the options down here where you can dial in your own noise reduction and noise gate and smart voice. Oh, you can still use a smart voice. And this, uh, I think, is kind of like a compressor or a limiter, so it kind of keeps your voice in a range that never gets too loud or inaudible. So kind of nice to have if you are an uh, expressive streamer and maybe get a little bit too loud. So some nice functionality there. If it doesn't sound you know, exactly how you want it out of the box, you can come in here and make some changes. If you have a lot of background noise, you can enable that AI noise cancellation and help to reduce some of that as well. So a lot of functionality built in here. Uh, this is really powerful. And like I said, this works with other microphones as well. So you can try this on a different headset too. All right, hopefully that gives you a good idea of the microphone and what you can do from within the Sonar app. Uh, lastly, we're going to move on to comfort, and this is usually the first thing I start with, but I'm saving it for last because this is kind of the only thing that I'm not a huge fan of on the Arctis Nova Pro Wireless. And that's a really surprising statement for me to say because I was a huge fan of the 7X and the 9X on the Xbox. I found those to be some of the most comfortable headsets that I've tried over there, but on the Nova Pro Wireless, it falls short a little bit for me. And it's not all bad, and it will probably be fine for most, kind of like the Corsair Virtuoso RGB wireless XT uh, but for me on the inside of the ear cups there just isn't quite the space and uh, comfort in there that I, I've really come to like out of some other gaming headsets. The combination of clamping force and the ANC bumps inside of the ear cups gives too much pressure and causes them to fatigue my ears a little bit more than some competitors like the Inzone H9 or some of the EPOS headsets. It's not the soft, spacious ear cup that, you know, I really enjoyed from the 7X and 9X. There's that little ANC bump in there, a little bit more going on. And considering how impressive everything else is on this $350 headset, you know, that's a little bit of a bummer for me that the comfort isn't quite up there. Now, I was still able to wear this for, you know, longer multi-hour gaming sessions and I didn't have to like rip them off of my head, but it was more noticeable and I could feel the ANC bumps in there pressed up against my ears compared to something like the Sony where that was never an issue. Now, I don't think that that's going to be an issue for all, but for me, it's definitely something that I noticed and something I had to call out. So overall, wrapping up here at $350, there's no denying that the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro Wireless is very expensive, but when you look at everything that it has, that makes sense. From a dual input hot swap battery wielding wireless base station to ANC, Bluetooth, and really powerful audio customization, what else could you ask for? Combine that with the clarity and positioning right out of the box that are necessary for competitive gaming and maybe we can say this is worth the price point. And the only thing that keeps me from saying that this is, you know, the best wireless gaming headset is that it falls a little bit short in comfort for me when compared to something like the Sony or some of the EPOS headsets. All right, and that's going to wrap it up for our review of the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro Wireless. Let us know what you think about it down in the comments below. And if you're looking for some other videos to watch, I'll link to our Sony Inzone H9 headset as well as our our most recent video. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. 
This is Jordan with 9to5Toys.